hope most of you don't fear them too much because they really are lovely creatures. Selves inextricably drawn to a herd of elephants that are feeding in front of us. We're just so desperate to come and have a look at them that we just couldn't resist, could we? Lovely, lovely elephants all gathered together. You can see they've been enjoying a mud bath, covering themselves, protecting their skin against what is a very warm day out here in the Masai Mara, coated in mud to help to protect their skin, and of course to help with all those itchy patches that they can't quite reach. So I just had to stop. Even though I'm searching for a rhinoceros, I just had to stop to have a look at the elephants as well. A female and her calf, quite an old calf, probably over three years old. I'd say somewhere around the region of three and a half. Lovely question coming through from Hallie. Now, Hallie, you want to know how long it takes elephants to reach their fully grown size. Hallie, the truth is they never completely stop growing. But for the females at around about 20 or so, their growth really slows down. So if you picture an elephant's growth as a graph, um, and, and it's sort of dictated by how old they are. They grow very, very fast in their first few years, and then it slows down and the curve sort of evens out until the growth is barely noticeable. But once they reach sexual maturity, that's when their growth really starts to slow down. So they grow rapidly for their first few years, and then slowly after that. And of course, their tusks continue to grow throughout their lives. And what's amazing here is just how much longer the tusks are on the females in Kenya than they are in South Africa. And I'm convinced it at least partially has something to do with the softness of the food that they eat here. They eat grass. And of course, the elephants in South Africa eat grass as well. But because the grass is green here and there's more of it for a longer period of time, I think that the elephants here eat less in the way of bark and branches. Jacob, elephants are strictly herbivores. Uh, in terms of eating meat, um, so something that we've chatted about is the process of osteophagy, which isn't really eating meat, but elephants will occasionally chew on bones as a way of supplementing their calcium. What you will find is they are curious animals. They might walk up to a carcass and have a look. You know, if something's killed a wildebeest or is something that's died of natural causes, they will go up and have a look. But no, they are strictly herbivorous. They will often go to salt licks to eat the dirt, to supplement the minerals, and they will chew bones, but their diet is plant-based. There are quite a few herbivore animals out here that do eat meat, though. Not enough for them to be considered to be herbivore, uh, to be considered to be omnivores, but enough that it's something interesting about them. So something like a warthog, which I saw earlier, but I think they've scuttled off. A warthog is a, belongs to the pig family. A warthog will eat meat, much like lots of pigs, lots of members of the pig family. Uh, there's certain antelope that will eat meat as well. Oh, look at this. Have a look. Sorry, Manu. Have a look at the baby at the back. I've just remembered to point this out. Look at that. Somebody had, a, I would say, probably a close encounter with a, a hyena or a lion at a very, very young age. Might not be that, though. It might not have lost its tail because of a predator. See, there's mum's tail. That's what its tail should look like. It might have been a scratch or something that got infected, and then obviously the infection could have spread and then caused the tail to drop off, but my money would be on a hyena. Something harassing it while it was very, very small, which is a dangerous thing for a predator to do out here because the entire elephant herd will band around the baby and protect it. But something happened to cause that loss of the tail.